There are four kinds of people you meet when you're sailing or when you're out on the water of life, <laughs> which is, you know, a really great segue to whiskey. I'm Daniel Whittington. I'm the Chancellor at Wizard Academy and Whiskey Marketing School. This is a story that we always tell on the roof of the tower. And that is why Wizard Academy exists and the kind of human beings for whom this exists. And also, by the way, many of you have noticed that at the top of this barrel is not even. And sometimes, well, it sits like this, or it sits over here, or it rocks and makes everyone real nervous. <laughs> I'm aware of it. It amuses me. <laughs> okay, so when you're sailing on the ocean of life, the first type of person that you meet is the drifter. And you can tell a drifter because they're just floating along at the mercy of the wind and the, uh, the waves and the current, and they just sort of go wherever things take them. They don't have their own energy, their own direction, their own passion. They're just at the mercy of everything else in the elements. And you can catch a drifter by the things they say. They say things like, hey man, What's the big deal? Don't get so uptight about it. Just relax. Everything's going to be fine. Hey, man, it'll all work out. We'll just figure it out. No big deal. That's fine. You find a lot of those people on islands, living island life. <laughs> hey, man, don't worry about it. We got, you know, waves and a surfboard. What else could you need? And that's fine. People choose that life. That's fine. They don't tend to come to Wizard Academy because we actually try to accomplish, make goals, and do something. And they tend to feel like we're a little too uptight and we're too demanding. And so they don't tend to show up here to take classes. The second type of person that you meet is surfing. And surfers look like they're doing a lot, but really they're just fancy drifters. <laughs> A surfer is the person who is always looking for the next wave to ride. And they find that wave, they get in front of it, and they do amazing shit. And it's hard to ride a wave. And they do tricks, and they flip and tail out, and they ride in and hit the barrel, and they're doing all kinds of fancy shit. And then it crashes, and they go back out, and they look for the next wave to ride. Now, there's talent involved in surfing, yes. But... The thing about a surfer is they don't create the wave, they don't create the current, they don't create the moment, they just go look for a moment to ride and then try to position themselves at the right place to ride a wave. Those people don't tend to come back to Wizard Academy. Sometimes they'll show up because they've heard we're the new shiny object. But the thing about surfers is it's hard work to create the currents and create the waves. And they don't wanna do that, they just wanna ride the wave. And so we are a school for people who are trying to build the, the currents and build the waves and build the futures that we can then ride. And that's a lot of brutally hard, boring and mundane work as much as it is fun. And surfers are shiny object people. They showed up here because we sounded cool and we were the new cool shiny object. And then we were like, you got to do hard work. And they're like, screw that. I'm going to go find another wave to ride. And that's when we lose them. The third type of person that you meet when you're sailing are drowners. Now, I don't mean, ah, this one requires a lot of caveat because it can feel really shaming and that's the opposite of what we're talking about. Everyone in their life will have to be rescued from drowning. Once, twice, multiple times, right? Either uh, chemically or financially, or emotionally, or I mean, any number of ways it, that as you live life and sh gets thrown at you, sometimes you're drowning and you need your family and your friends and a community around you to lift you back up and breathe air back into your, your lungs, right? That's called life. That's a normal human being. That is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about are professional drowners, people who are relentlessly drowning. And no matter how many times you lift them up, dust them off and try to help them, they just drown themselves again. You, these are people that you run into and you're like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, oh man, just worst, worst year ever, man. Everything's terrible. Life sucks. I can't seem to get a break. And you're like, oh, that's terrible. Let me help. And because you're, you know, human, 
And so you help, you dust them off, you give them some money, you fix some things, you get them back on their feet and dusted and off down the road and say, God, you know, Godspeed. And then three months later, you run into them. How's it going? How are you doing? Oh man, it's just been the worst three months ever. Everything sucks and everything's going down. And I don't even know. I'm never going to, these people are professional drowners. And we do our best to avoid professional drowners because if you don't, you switch from your normal life to become a full-time Coast Guard and rescue mission. Those people will suck the life out of everything that they touch, including you. You can spend the rest of your life rescuing drowners and never get ahead of the curve, right? At Wizard Academy, we just, we have too little time to teach people and give people advice and support. We don't have time to rescue people. There are other industries that do that, and we're not one of them. That leaves the fourth kind of person that you meet when you're out on the ocean of life that is the kind of people that we hope to be and draw and teach and guide. And those people are sailors. But let's talk about Lagavulin 11, the Offerman Edition charred oak cask. So this is 11-year-old Lagavulin, aged in heavily charred ex-bourbon and ex-red wine casks, selected by Nick Offerman as a part of the process. Ooh, and he says, goes perfectly with a steak. And I'm a vegetarian, so I say, wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna try. Uh, but I love Lagavulin. And what I like about this one is that the Lagavulin 16 to me always has this dense cigar, old cigar library fireplace leather chair vibe that like as soon as I pick up Lagavulin 16, I just feel like I'm easing into an old leather armchair in a, a nice library with a thick carpet and a fire going and a glass of whiskey and a cigar sitting in a tray. And I love that about it. It feels elegant and it's got a, almost a zesty sort of minty weird like lift to it. This one right here, it's got all of the smoke and all the ash, but it's also really vibrant in the nose. Like it really jumps out of the glass with lighter notes than I've ever smelled in a Lagavulin. Way more of the light fruit and fl almost floral. Uh, I hesitate to say floral, but it's almost in the direction of like the lightness of smelling flowers or fresh fruit. And then it's immediately threaded through like a gold vein with smoke and ash and leather. Mmm, smells really good. Oh yeah, there it is. It just delivers this like really soft vanilla sweetness and then, and then the bedrock is that sort of smoky ash and it turns more ash than smoke on the palate. And my lingering palate is very ashy. Woo, like the aftertaste of like a really burnt marshmallow where now just the black charred bits are still left over. There is some sort of like burnt proteiny, like when I ate meat, like that charred end brisket kind of, but it's not as heavy meaty as it is light ashy. Like so compared to like an Arbeg, which has density, this is, this is almost delicate as a presentation of a Isla smoky scotch. It's really nice. Ah, all right. That's a good one. I like that one. I like that better than the eight. I had the eight and I thought, ooh, a little punchy. This one, softer, nicer. This might be my favorite of the Offerman releases that I've had. There's a new one that's Caribbean cask that I haven't tried, but uh, this, is, this is really good. Okay, so the fourth type of people are sailing. And there are a couple ways that you know sailors because the problem is you can't tell a sailor by their circumstances when you meet them. Someone who's sailing is on the ocean and sometimes there's no wind and there's no current. 
And when you meet a sailor and they're in a space where there's no wind and there's no current, they might look like drifters. But that doesn't make them a drifter. If the sailor's on the boat and the waves are going nuts, you might encounter a sailor who's riding a wave. But that does not make them a surfer. And if it's gone wrong, you might encounter a sailor who's drowning. That does not make them a drowner. The circumstances you're in in the single moment that someone encounters you are not what defines you in those moments, right? Sailors have to be rescued more than most. That's part of sailing. Uh, you know how you never have to get rescued from drowning? Don't go on the water. <laughs> so there's two things that set a sailor apart from surfers, drifters, and drowners. One is they have a north star. That is, they have a fixed guiding point. The thing by which they make all their decisions that everything else falls beside. This is the hill they'll die on. And you can have multiple north stars and not just one. You can have, this is my guiding north star in life. You can have it in a marriage. You can have it in a friendship. You can have it in a specific job, right? This is just in this moment, in this circumstance, in these connections, this is my fixed north star. This is my guiding point when I'm faced with a choice. I don't have to choose. I just, I don't have to choose without guessing. I'm guessing, I mean. I can just look at which choice takes me closer to my guiding point. And then that's the answer, right? But a fixed guiding point, a North Star, or the Southern Cross, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, the North Star is irrelevant if you're not going somewhere. If you, I mean, you could sit on a boat and know where the North Star is. If you're not actually sailing, there's no point to knowing where the North Star is. So the second thing that defines a sailor is they have a destination, a clearly defined destination, that this is where I'm headed and this is where I'm going. And on my path there, I make choices that guide me closer to my North Star. And wherever I end up, that's where I end up, right? You need a destination. And what I mean by that is, it's very easy for people who are foraging and growing and making things happen and starting a business to just be like, we're just going to go and we'll see and we'll work real hard and it'll figure itself out. But that's not how that works. You need an actual destination. You need to set in your mind, this is where I'm headed and really importantly, this is what it will look like when I get there. And that means that you can't have weird and tangible goals like, you know, I'll be successful. Or, you know, I'll be rich. That doesn't mean anything, right? So say you start a restaurant. If I say, what's your destination? When will you have said, I made it? If your answer is like, well, I'm a really popular restaurant. No, bullshit. Or, no, I'm really successful. No, bullshit. That doesn't mean anything. Give me something an outsider can describe with their eyes without knowing you. And so the answer, it could be, I hire my 15th employee. When I've got a staff of 15 running this restaurant, I will think, dang, we did it. When I open my second location, when I'm open seven days a week, these are goals that have an actual destination in mind. And you have to set those because I'm telling you, as someone who's done this a lot, when you get there, it won't feel like you've succeeded. By the time you open your second location for a restaurant, you still feel like you're in survival mode. That's how that works. If you don't set that marker and then tell people, then when you hit it, you just blow past it and keep moving. Keep nose down. You need people around you to go, hey, 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 stop. You just did it. That thing you said two years ago, you just did it. I know it doesn't feel like it, but you just did it. And it's time to reset your goals and figure out your new destination. Because what happens when you're sailing across the ocean looking for the new land is you think, we want to reach the new land. And then you get to the new land and behind the new land is a mountain range. And you're like, Shit. <laughs> now we've got to hit to the mountains. And then you get to the first mountain range and you stand up on the top and you think, we did it. And past the mountain range is a higher mountain range. And you're like, Shit. and that can just keep going on forever, right? So you got to be careful about that. Set your markers and you have to celebrate them and surround yourself with people who can help you. But that's what makes a mark for Wizard Academy students. We want sailors. And our goal at Wizard Academy is to help people find and define their North Star and then help find and define their destination and then to equip them and give them the tools 
to get there. I'm really glad you're here. Cheers. If you're just sailing along, it's time for you to like and subscribe. Just pause, just for a moment in your journey, like and subscribe.